Hello, everyone, and welcome to Eleven Foot Pole, a tale of high adventures set in the burning world of Dark Sun. My name is Glenn. I am the dungeon master for this session, and joining me, huddled around the microphones in alphabetical order, is my team. Hey, I'm uh, Corey. I'm playing Fulgrin Dustwalker, a I mean, remember all the things. <laughs> Savage, halfling, barbarian of the wastes. Yeah. Halfling, yeah. barbarian. Hi. I'm Darren. I'm playing Zorus, the a mole gladiator. I'm Jason. I am playing um, Chaka, a third level Rykreen ranger of the wastelands. I'm JP playing uh, Taldori, no infringement intended, um, of Cyanus of the Wasteland. So we had some technical difficulty in our last episode, so I'm just going to, for the sake of um, covering our butts, I'm just going to re review what happened. We are playing through phd and Rhyme of the Dark Sun, a Dark Sun reskinning of the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign. Our players just arrived in Kled, uh, which those of you who have played Rhyme of the Frost Maiden will recognize as the town of Tourmaline. And as soon as they got to this dwarven settlement, all they could hear about was how the nearby mine had been closed down because it had been invaded by these Morlocks, these, these uh, dust, el uh, dust elves, yeah, these dust goblins, uh, that came out of came out of nowhere, came out of the darkness, and drove the miners out of the obsidian uh, sort of. It's half mine, half sort of natural cave complex. They call the howling caves because of this wind that's always whipping up from the depths and out through the top. Uh, so after hearing about it from about fifteen different people, the party finally decided to head on over to this mine and see if they could help. They were offered uh, fifty ceramic pieces. Uh, for uh, for clearing out this mine and making it safe for travel, so they arrived in the in the first room here of the mine. There's sort of three different uh, paths that lead out, and um, they spotted some. They spotted a sign outside which they could barely putting all four of their heads together read that it said uh, Morlocks only, uh, written in a kind of nice sort of almost calligraphy kind of script. And they're like, well, that's strange. Not many people on the burning world of Athos, the planet we now live on, um, can read in the first place. Especially not dust goblins. They went inside. They see some tracks going off this way in the dust of rodents of unusual size. And down these two passageways, they see uh, more traditional goblin footprints. And so they've lit a torch. Their, their scion is carrying the torch, and they're trying to decide if they're going to go down the middle passageway or down the left-hand passageway. Which way do you guys go? Defer to the ranger. That's right. So the ranger um, staying on task. Um, we, we, were, we were coming down here for some goblins. Let's go, go after some goblins. But do you go left or center? Oh, well, which direction the 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 the, the rat footprints were? <laughs> we see the goblins. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the rat the rats go left, center, and right. Both have goblin footprints fanning out between them. So if you're trying to go straight for the goblins, you have to choose between center and right. Right. Okay. So, um, which <laughs> which direction seems more promising? Just you can't tell. Right. Go right. Can't tell. All right. You guys go to the right. You come out in area M4. Um, the passageway curls around, goes around to the left, and comes out, and you're kind of like on a ledge overlooking a about 30 by 30 cave room with two other ways out, left and right. Benches and tables are set up as workplaces where uh, the miners uh, shape and sharpen the um, obsidian pieces that they find. Gravel and pebbles are strewn all over the floor. Scattered across the floor are a few uh, hammers, picks, and broken lanterns. Uh, you guys will have to jump down to get into this room about five or six feet. Five Who jumps down feet. first? The Thrycreen. All right. Who's behind him? 
Fulgrim. All right. Eventually, yeah, you guys just go in order. Yeah. Okay. You guys make it into the room. Um, the howling wind sound is coming much louder in this room. It's from the right hand passage. Um, it looks to you like the miners were forced to leave this area in a hurry. Um, what do you guys do? The, the howling wind sound is coming from the right-hand passage. The left-hand passage looks to you like it might lead back the way you guys came or back towards where you started. Um, what do you guys do? Hmm. Uh, right again. Bulgren, yes, go. You're in. Bulgren, take the lead. Yeah, let's go. So you guys turn right. Sounds good. Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, All right. and, 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 and I read that as well. Okay. So you guys, uh, you guys come out into this cave area. This is kind of the edge of a cliff. And this is this huge pit that uh, basically a shaft that descends straight down into the earth. And this howling wind is coming up, roaring out of this thing. And uh, the, the, the shaft continues up above and there's just like this constant stream of air and it'll kind of, it'll kind of abate just a little bit for a second and then it'll pick back up real strong again. Uh, there's another ledge on the other side and you can see where the miners have built this, um, sort of wooden bridge walkway thing across the gap. Uh, no handrails, completely OSHA uh, certified, you're sure. Um, wooden planks and struts form a walkway along the wall of a seemingly bottomless vertical shaft. Um, the sound of the rushing air is loud in this confined space. Uh, you guys just head across and keep going. Well, wait a minute. How far is that ramp? I mean, how many? How, how much long? distance? It's how it's maybe it? thirty feet. It's maybe thirty feet long. Hey, that's my jumping distance. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but do you want to jump there, a gust of air? Glenn, how, how strong does that air feel like it's gusting through there? It is, it's it's gusting. It's gusting, yeah, Darren. You, you get up in the air, you're going to be history. I was Shaka thinking, is a leaper. <laughs> I was thinking we might want to do some kind of tie-off or even some, put some rope across there to see if we can... Uh, well, JP, change naked, so. JP, change your background. You have an uh, inappropriate... You have an inappropriate background. That inappropriate? It is not dark sun. It is not, it is not on brand. Uh, okay. So, uh, Chaka, are you going to walk across or try to leap across? I, I would attempt to leap across. Of course you would. Should we tie him off first? So if he gets to the other well, side, then we'd have my, a rope okay. across for the rest of us. Let's do this because I have adventuring gear. Um, but if somebody had rope, I would take it. Like leap one in one of my and just kind of pull it out when I go across. Does, Does anyone Tal have Dory rope? Has, oh, all Tal Dory has is two water skins. That's literally it. Uh, how I many feet? I Corey, how many feet of rope are you hiding underneath that loincloth? It is you dropped everything, Corey. No. Nah. I just, so you're wearing a I backpack, strip. wearing a loincloth? Yes. yes. Can I get an image? Can, can you put an image in the chat? <laughs> Jason, Cor <laughs> JP, Corey's on our team. <laughs> uh, yes, he has rope because I uh, um, I read the the instructions and shopped for things. That okay. I need. Right. So okay, uh, I have fifty foot of rope. So okay, does Ch is Chaka just going for it, or is he communicating yeah. that he would like to be tied off? Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, thinking of this as a plan. So let's have Ch Chaka uh, communicate with uh, the Scion again, since we've established that. Um, this is what he's um, thinking about doing. 
Okay. Share share that with everyone. Right, right, right. Okay. So we need a plane. So if this is a standing leap. I don't have to do a running leap or nothing. Um, no, 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 no. You can just you can just leap right out into that gale force wind. Yeah. Okay. So with uh, what with. Yeah, yeah. Um, Corey and I are going to to find a way that the rope that he has, we're going to tie that off into something that's heavier than Corey. The mole, <laughs> tie it to the mole. Yeah, let's let's, <laughs> let's tie it to some kind of rock outgrowing. The the mole will hold on to it. How about that? Okay, that's right. All right, so all right. Armed with a armed with a bow in the primary hands and a rope in one of the secondary hands, we're jumping. Okay, all right. Uh, so, I mean. Jumping out into this wind is obviously a terrible idea. Uh, yeah. I'll give you like a DC 17 uh, dexterity saving throw, not to be swept uh, up in the gale. So roll a oh, that D20. Kind of wind. Yeah, I said gale force that wind. Kind of, you said, yeah. You said gale force wind? All right. I, I uh, did. That's a, I did. That's an issue. Um, <laughs> uh, so at least I'm tied off. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, there you you're going to roll, there, you're gonna roll a is. d20. You're going to roll a d20, right. and you're going to add your dexterity saving throw bonus to it. Yeah, let's see where we are. Uh, dexterity saving throw. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Got an 18, baby. All right. So he jumps, <laughs> holding the end of the rope in his little in his little T-Rex hands, holding his bow in his main hands as if he's going to be able to shoot it in this hurricane. And you guys see him flopping around like a leaf on the on the breeze, right? Like the rope is 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 completely uh paid out and it's it's tied to one of the stakes that's holding the bridge in place and you guys see him flop around flop around in the breeze and then the wind flips him around and lands him on his feet <laughs> on the other side and he looks at you with this uh, with his buggy face and he telepathically is like first try <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys waiting on? <laughs> right? The rope is like, you know, flailing around in the breeze. Uh, what about the rest of you guys? What, what do the rest of you guys do? Uh, I, I think maybe the rest of us will, will hold on to the rope and see if we can uh, make our way across. Assuming that our, our ranger friend's going to keep it taut over there. Mm. Oh, I don't. I, that I, 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 there's no guarantees about that. There is a uh, there is kind of a, a rope. Um, there's not a a handrail, but there is like a rope that you can use to steady yourself. Um, the rest of you guys cross with no problem. Uh, everybody, make a perception check. Really? Eight. Uh, remind me how that works here. Roll a d20 and add your wisdom bonus. Or, or are you using are you using a uh, reference sheet there? Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, it, it'll say perception. Yeah, yeah. Plus yeah, I got, I got that. I just want to roll. So I got a seven. I got a seven as well. Oh, Corey. Eight. All right, you guys go through. That wasn't even supposed to be a, a dangerous encounter, but you guys made it exciting for the viewers. I appreciate that. Um, you guys, you guys go down this passageway another uh, another forty feet and come to a. Uh, Basically, a small little round-ish cave. A wooden pulley system has been constructed around a large hole in the floor. A bucket big enough to hold a humanoid is held up by a thick rope. Three alcoves next to the lift contain wooden boards and mining equipment. So there's a hole in the ground, um, a natural hole, and the miners have built this kind of bucket lift big enough for about one person above it. Who goes first? There's a halfling that could fit in that bucket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll bet. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I will uh, request the torch. Okay. And I will hop in the bucket. 
Oh yeah. Uh uh JP, roll a uh evens or odds. Roll evens or odds? I'll roll just, odds. Just just okay, odds. Evens it is. The uh the torch actually goes out when you're in the uh when you're in the wind there, and there's a few minutes of almost total darkness. Uh somebody has dark vision though, right? Dark green does. I mean, yeah, does the uh, the thrive cream. No, halfling does not. The thrive cream is that your nose? <laughs> <laughs> the thrive cream is able to get the torch relit on the other side. Uh, so now the 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 barbarian of the savage wastes um, takes your torch, and uh, you guys going to crank him down. Yeah. Actually, I think there's a Oh, there's a crank beside the system, but there's also a crank in the bucket. Okay, I'll do the one by the uh by the system. Okay, you uh you get your you get your barbarian um what's his name again? Fulgrin. You get Fulgrin down to the down to the bottom there. Uh you see Basically another small round cavern with dusty hallways that go north and south. Um, I assume you don't go off by yourself until the rest of the party comes down. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can. You no, definitely no, can. Wait. Yeah, I wait for, um, I, I will tug on the rope to let them know I'm all the way down and wait for yeah. the next. So, so we literally just have to shimmy down the rope. The, the bucket no. rides nothing to be. There's a bucket. Yeah, I got it. You guys, there's a crank at the top, and there's yeah. a crank in the bucket. So you crank, yeah, it. you crank him down. You crank it back up. You get in. Somebody cranks you down. Yes, nobody has to shimmy okay. down. You can take the bucket down. Okay, so it's big enough to hold a medium sized person. Yeah, I said that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. The mechanism creaks as the bucket lift descends to the floor of a small cave with two dusty tunnels lead in opposite directions. Uh, is the Thrycreen going to search for tracks? Sure. Sounds like roll a good that, idea. Roll that survival check. Here. I, I would have done that while I was waiting as well. Roll that survival check. And a 17. 22. All right. Nice. Before he even gets down, you pass the torch over the, uh, over the floor and look around. Um, uh, there are a lot of, of goblin footprints heading to the South, uh, actually the Southwest, uh, whereas a single set of kobold a single set of goblin footprints lead off to the northeast. Hmm. So there's two yeah. ways out. A whole bunch of footprints going to the south. One set lead off to the north. Which way do you guys head? North. Yeah, I'm with Corey. Like okay. it. Okay. I will hand the torch back to the scion assist. All right. Uh, so the sound of rushing air gets louder as you go this way. Uh, you come into a large uh, open chamber. A hole in the west side of this chamber opens into the central shaft, letting in the sound of the wind. Uh, the floor to the north of the cave is five feet higher than at the south end, a rocky ridge separating the slope, other side, top ridge, the walls of the ridge gleam with rich gem deposits. Um, so you guys come into this room. There's sort of a high area in the middle. Um, you notice this must be uh, where they were working at one time because there's some obsidian deposits uh, still in the stone. And then there's a hallway that kind of, or an opening that leads off to the left where the sound of the rushing wind is coming from. What do you guys do? Um, I look at uh, Shaka and um, 
and then down at the ground and kind of suggest that we look for tracks here as well. Okay. All right. Roll them. Uh, roll them survival checks. Uh, I got a, I got an eighteen plus modifier there. Seventeen. Okay. 22. So both of you guys are like trying to get, you know, to make sure nobody obscures the tracks and you guys are both looking and the, the camera has, you know, your both your faces are kind of close to the ground and you're holding the torch and, and you're looking and you come along and you see the footprints left, right, left, right. And then like the footprints are kind of like um, distorted, like um, like the person shuffled their feet a little bit and then they just end. And you both look at each other and you're wondering what that could mean. And the, the camera is showing you like from the low angle and the, the torch light behind you, you see these tentacles unfurl from the darkness as something comes down to get you. Let's roll for yeah. initiative. All right, we are back. So this, uh, this tentacled horror comes into the light from the very highest part of the ceiling. That's what the footprints you saw, right? Something was picked up off, the goblin was picked up off the ground and carried away. And now this thing comes floating down at you guys. Um, and your eyes widen and you guys turn just in time to see it lash out at you. Tentacles. Malia attack. But how many? Oh, I only get one attack with all these tentacles. Okay. Um, evens it goes for Corey. Evens it is. The tentacles lash down at you, Corey. All right. Uh, eight and four is 12. That does not hit. Okay. Um, so all these tentacles reach down and try to grab you and you kind of roll across the dust and get out of the way. But it's uh, it's head, it's it's got the it's got tentacles down here at the butt end. It's got a great big mouth down here at the head end. The head end goes for your Thrycreen's head. Nine and four is thirteen. Not a You're cutting in and out. Give me a thumbs up if I hit and a thumbs down if I miss. I missed. Okay. All right, uh, and Jason, the the in un understandable, you're up. We can't understand a word. I can't understand a word you're saying. Try again. Bonus action, mark. Bonus action, Hunter's mark. Okay, and then you're going to attack with your bow. Appropriate. Ranged, because he also has a gift go or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you are in melee with it, so I guess you would want to use your your uh, staff. Okay, there we are. So that is a um, that's a nineteen to hit. Hits. Okay. So we're going to do um, a die eight plus three plus six because of Hunter's mark. Okay. Um, so that's going to be three plus um, three is six plus six is 12. Great. Oogly moogly. All right. Uh, JP. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to bounce out of range. Can I move? No, I, actually that draws an opportunity, right? It would. Yes, move, it would. Okay, we'll leave it where he is. No problem. JP, right, you're so, back uh, here. Yep, I am. Aldori was going to drive a disorienting spike of psychic psychic energy into the mind of the creature. Okay. And I'm going to need a, an intelligence saving throw. I am at plus one. I got a 13, a total of 14. I believe that saves. Yes, it does. So uh, that is it. I think I'm done. All right, Corey. Okay, uh, Fulgrin will pull out his maul and he will rage. And uh, then he will make an attack. Okay. This creature. 
Uh, that probably misses, but uh, an 11. An 11 misses. Ah, uh, okay. That's my turn. And, and Darren. Okay, so move forward, and uh, I will try to hit him, and then try evasive footwork at that time. Okay. Uh, when I move, uh, it's trick die. What do I roll for the trick die? What? Sheet? It says in the description of evasive, like read the read the trick. Uh, it does. It says uh, when you move, you can expend the trick die, rolling the die and adding the number rolled to your armor class until you stop moving. Right. So the trick dies are D8. So you would roll that D8 and add it to your armor class. I got a five. All right. And I roll the hit. I have a 16. 16 hits. And nine plus three, 12 slashing damage. Great. Scott. All right. Uh, yeah, you guys are tearing into this thing. It screams in inhuman fear and, and pain. And um, it's kind of writhing its tentacles all over the place. Um, okay. Um, you guys did the exact same amount of damage, uh, which is why I'm going to, uh, lash out at the, uh, at the mole with my tentacles. There we go. 14 on the die and I'm at plus four. I have a 13 armor class, so that hits. All right. Now, didn't didn't you just add five to your armor class, though? Oh, wait. Yeah, I did. Thank you, Corey. Uh, so I'm at 18 armor class. 18 is what I got. Okay. Ooh. I rolled a 14 and I'm at plus four. Thanks, Corey. <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> you take five points of piercing damage. Ow. And you must and you must succeed on a DC 11 constitution saving throw. I'm sorry. So I take five hit points, you said? You do? And, and now I roll, have a, to roll a, a 20 sided, and I'm trying to get what? You're trying to add your constitution bonus. Uh, your, um, you get plus four on constitution saves. Okay. What'd you get? 19. Okay. You so are not poisoned. You are not poisoned or paralyzed. Um, okay. Good for you. But you are grappled. So okay. the classic illustration, I, I, I want to go in and edit it into this episode from the original Fiend Folio where they introduced the Grell shows the fighter. It's like a full page picture of a fighter being picked up by the Grell and he's trying to stab it with his sword. Um, that The guy who did that illustration just passed away a few months ago. Rest in peace. Um so now you are being picked up off the ground as the thing starts to act like it's going to float away, uh, but it's going to take a parting... Actually, you know... Uh, Corey, if I have him grappled, do I get advantage on melee attacks against him? Nope. Are you sure? Because I feel like I do. I'm, I'm sure you don't. Nope, you do not. If you had a story up on that one. Uh, okay, so a 15 doesn't hit you with your new and improved trick armor class. Okay. All right. Uh, listeners uh, and viewers, especially, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, if you're on um, iTunes and going to give us a review, please mention whether you think the Grell should be able to... <laughs> take a bite out of a creature that it's completely got entwined in its tentacles. Feels to me like it, it should be automatic, not just advantage, automatic. Uh, Jason, you're up. Okay. So um, we attacked with the Gisco the previous round. Um, so am I, am I allowed to attack also with the, um, the bow given our foot arrangement or our arm arrangement? No, no. because you had to drop the bow to pull your, uh, to pull your battle staff out because you said you were carrying the bow before. So now the uh, bow's on the... Drop. I shouldn't have to drop the bow. I've got four arms. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I'm saying is... Now, I should have to drop it. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's funny. 
It's true. It's absolutely true. It is absolutely true. Uh, uh, I'm going to rule. Uh, you, you can't. You can't carry a weapon with the heavy property in your in your off hands. We'll double check the rules between uh, between when we're not on the just, air. Well, but for I'm right now, shooting, shooting the secondary hands as as a weapon. It, primary hands have got to be holding the Githka because it is a two two handed attack. Check, check your weapons. It has to be a light, a weapon with a light property. That's right. So is a um, look. We're we're not is we're not going to argue about the, we're not going to argue about this on air. You have to use right. the tchotchkes. All right, all right. I'll get I'll get back with um, Corey on that. That's a nat twenty. So suck it. Ha <laughs> ha! There you go. <laughs> now you're talking. All right. Roll your damage twice and add right. your strength so, modifier. So that you sucked it, Yeglin. <laughs> on the way. Feel free to uh, sever that whole tentacle. Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, let me see that. That's plus three. So that's uh, six plus three is nine plus six is 15 for the first one. And then two plus three is five plus six is 11 for the second. So what, uh, did you, did you hit both? Did you hit both times? Wait, what are you doing? That's, that's double damage, right? Right. But you don't double your modifiers. You just... Roll the damage oh, twice, yeah, yeah. and then add the right, modifiers. Right. And then add modifiers. Okay. Um, so what did I have? The first time I said it was uh, 6 plus 9. Okay. So it's going to be um, 6 plus 3, which is 9. The other one is 3 plus 3, which is 6. So that's 15. And then the uh, modifier, that is the, uh, the the plus 6 for the, for the spell. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. So 21. You're asking or telling? What do you... I want to make sure I got this counted right. So I rolled a six and I rolled a three. Six on one, a three on the other. I get a plus three. It's one die eight plus three for each attack. No, you only add the plus three once. All right. Okay. So it's a six plus a three is nine. Plus three is 12. Plus six is 18. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, and this, this, and this, this concludes our first grade math lesson for the, for this episode. It can get a little confusing. Are, are it it can. Rolling, are you rolling a D6 for your hunter's mark, or are you just adding a flat six? I'm adding it because it says plus six. It didn't say on oh, hunter's mark. It didn't say roll it. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are back after yeah, having dealt with, math. after tra- dealing with 5E's math. I'm not, I'm not blaming Jason for that one. I'm blaming 5E. All right. So 20 damage total. It's badly hurt. It is, it is, it is below half. Um, and John, the savage scion of the wastes, comes in. Uh, Tal Dory, not John. So this time I'm going to whisper a discordant melody that only okay. the creature can hear. I uh, need a wisdom you, uh, saving throw. It, it, you remember you made me sing the melody earlier, so uh, sauce for the you, goose. Your brain shall explode as you hear this discordant melody. All right. Now, what am I doing? Saving throw? Wisdom. And that 20 on the die means I succeeded. It's crooked on my computer, on my video. Uh, don't worry about it. It's it's and nice. That's and not straight. an automatic. That's not an automatic success either. What was the DC, John? Thirteen. You passed. Okay. Uh, does that end your turn? It does. Okay. Uh, Corey. Okay, I will uh, ready my mall and um, Fulgrin is pretty uh, angry that he missed last time. So uh, he's going to recklessly attack this time. Oh, boy. <laughs> and he got an 11. Still so, missed. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. He's, he's even more rageful than he was before. Darren, you are being carried aloft. And can I attack normally? <sighs> Unfortunately, the rules say yes. All right, then. It's nice that the rules break our way once in a while. Mm. 17. 
17 hits. And a 10 for damage. Oh! 3, 13. Uh, uh, 13 is how many it had left. The creature howls in alien agony and drops you to the sandy floor. What do you guys do? What do you say as you pick your what do you say as you pick yourself up? Pull myself out of that tentacle. Right, 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 right. There's been there's been uh there's been uh un unasked for tentacle uh, situations in both combats in this world so far. Seems to be a recurring theme. You're the one that's setting this thing up, man. So, I mean, hey. You know. So. Not, not to, to do rules things on the air, but how does the experience work in this campaign? So most everybody in 5th edition uses uh, what's called... Um, Help me out, guys. It's not called benchmarks. Milestone. Milestone. Milestone uh, experience where you basically level up after a couple adventures, you level up, and then a couple more, you level up again. It's basically built into the way the adventure is written. Okay. It's not necessarily my favorite, but everybody in 5e seems to like it, so that's what we're doing. You level up at my whim when I when I feel like you've you've earned it. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Whimstone. Mm-hmm. Whimstones. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, so you picked so, yourself so, up. So, did this thing was it disguised as a halfling who came, or a goblin who came down here, or did it eat the goblin who came down here? I mean, he's asking the rest of you guys. What do you guys think? What do you guys do? Well, I mean, we could open it up and find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Cut it up I can, and, and see if I, there's a goblin inside. Yeah, it, I love Fulgren, it. Fulgren pulls out his dagger and begins to do that. Nice. That's all a right. Great idea. What, what, what are the rest the of the shark? Autopsy the shark. Brilliant. What are the uh, rest of you guys going to do while he does that? Uh, let's make sure that's Search the, the only one of those squid things that's up in the rafters. All right. for usable stuff. Uh, you guys, uh, while he's cutting it open, you guys start searching uh, the rest of this cavern. You find um, a pile of bones, uh, including um, uh, what looks to you to be one set of dwarf bones and one set of dust goblin bones. Um Corey, uh, you open this thing up and, um, you find, uh, you find a delicious liver and, uh, you find a, uh, a bezoar in there, uh, made out of, made out of pure obsidian you think might be worth something to the right buyer. Wow. There you go. I'll take the liver too. <laughs> take as in put in your backpack or take as in chow down on. Yum, 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 yum. Well, is it its liver? Yeah. I'm assuming it's, it's, um, no. I'm saying like, like you recognize it. Beans you, with that? Yeah. You recognize its liver as a, as a delicious, um, snack. Um, a little busy right now, so I'll, I'll like wrap it in a rag. Okay. Save it for later. All right. All right. All right. Um. So there's no other ways out of this room except this kind of opening over here, which leads again into this um, roaring wind uh, pit. Um. Uh, Chaka, you want to jump out there again? Nope. Okay. We're gonna hold on for a second. Wait, wait. So this is. And this is yet another roaring wind over a pit. It's situation. the same pit. You guys have gone. Okay. You guys have gone down, and now mm-hmm. it's another opening in the side of that same central shaft. 
You go over and look out there. Sure. Uh, so you look, you look around, you look up and you can see the, uh, the bridge just barely make out, uh, the bridge in the darkness up there. And Mm -hmm. you spy movement underneath the bridge. It's a little too far to make out what it is, but you see something clinging to the underside of the bridge. And for just a second, you see these two huge round eyes flash where they're looking in your direction, like Gollum in um, Khazad doom, you know, in the minds of Moria, where you just see his eyes reflected. You see these two eyes reflected from underneath the bridge, but then they're gone and you don't see anything else. Hmm. Gone is a thing. He closed it. It closed its eyes, or gone. Or looked gone? away. Looked away. Yeah. Go get him, Chaka. I mean, is there anything friendly down here? Should we not? Right. <laughs> Take a shot at it. Right. And we're not That's... on a rescue mission, right? This is a eradicate mission. This Just is make it safe for whatever tourism again or whatever. Right, right. Yeah. Industry. Economy. Industry we in this case, the, but yeah. We got to get the economy tourism. moving, people. We got to get this economy <laughs> moving. So look, so if you, will you allow me this? Um, I'll, I'll, um, I will um, telepathically um, flash that image that I saw to the Scion. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I will uh, pull the longbow. Right. Right. And yeah, I'm with. You. I'm following you. Yeah. With it. advantage. With advantage, I'm going to shoot at that thing. Well, with why would you have, on the roll? Why would you have advantage? Because I'm attacking a creature um, before it uh, attacks me. Let's see. That is a natural explorer trait. First turn in combat, you have advantage on attack rolls against creatures that have not yet acted. Okay. <laughs> you. Ha- you have disadvantage because of the wind, but I'm going to say it, it balances out. Cancels out, okay, to a single roll, so, right? So, hold on. So, way up above you mm-hmm. are these, on the underside of the bridge, are these creepy dust goblin morlock things. Oh. Okay? I'm representing them with this. You're taking a shot. Yeah, you're just rolling regular D20. Yep, so I've, I've focused my hunter's mark on one of those. Okay. How long does Hunter's Mark last? An hour. Okay. Wow. An hour is a long time. That's a long time, time, time adventuring. It's a long time of adventuring. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 12. Okay. 12 does not quite hit, but the arrow streaks up, hits one of the supports of the bridge. Uh oh. And you see two figures, two uh, very much like Gollum in the movies, uh, underneath this bridge, trying to skitter to safety. They get out on top of the bridge. You're going to have one more, one more shot at them uh, before before they both skitter away. But now you'd be at disadvantage because of the wind, and they yeah, they've man, acted. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. So go ahead and roll that last attack. Oh, at disadvantage. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, not going to make it a nat 20 and a three. Oh, <laughs> doesn't that hurt? Doesn't that just sting? It does. Uh. It does. <laughs> All right. So they go skittering away. So now I assume that there's nowhere else to go. You guys are going to go back to that passage to the south. I guess so. All right. Did I pull out my bookmark? Why would I do something as silly as that? Oh, no, I didn't. It's right here. All right. Um, You guys... Okay. Uh, A table and chairs are set up in this area to create a space for miners to take breaks. On top of the table are two... Morlocks poking a goblin, a giant uh, rat, a a rodent of unusual size with their javelins to make sure it's dead. They screech loudly as they notice you. Rather than uh, re-roll initiative for everybody, I'm just going to roll initiative for them. 
and they are actually at the bottom of the order. So, Jason, you see these three, uh, you see these three um, Morlocks in this room uh, going, looking at this dead rat body. What do you do? Okay. Morlocks are bad, right? Yes, they screech loudly when they see you. Okay, we're going to be uh, w- with the uh, longbow. Uh-huh. Uh, so this could be uh, 17. 17 uh, hits. Okay. So I think that was 1.8 plus 3. Uh-huh. Oh, that's a full 8 plus 3. That's 11. Whew! All right. Your arrow streaks out and goes like right through one of its lungs in between the ribs and out its <laughs> out sticking out between by its spine on the back. It's like ah! into the second one. No, 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 no. It's, it's still alive. It's still alive, but it's it's gonna need to see to see a professional about this. Uh, John, tell um, Dory. But tell Dory. She's going to do something kind of out of character because she's kind of been wanting to do this, but move her up to the right of the rat, the dead rat. Um, five, 10, 15, no, 5, 10, 15, 20. Each of these is 10 feet. Well, then I can't do that. So never mind. Okay. Okay. Let me go back to square one then, sir. <laughs> or hex one in this case. Even though we took up 10 feet. Um, Actually, each one of these hexes is about seven and a quarter feet. Oh, yeah, because we want to do math. Yeah. <laughs> See the previous segment. Only thing I had to do multiple. Um, fuck it, I'm not going to waste anything. Gonna shoot a ray of frost, a um, not a ray of frost, a mental blast of ice chilling, bone chilling, just psychic energy. Energy, yes. yes. Um, at the hurt one or one of the be, two unwounded ones? Uh, the one on the right, and not what I asked. 14 okay. to hit, 14, 14 hits for three whopping psychic damage. All right. And its speed is reduced its speed is reduced by 10. Okay. All right. So so you see this this light flash on her forehead and leap out and hit this guy and um he he grabs his head and screams in pain and a little bit of a little bit of frost forms on his side and on his leg. Uh Corey. Okay. Um so Fulgren has 25 feet of movement. Can he make it to one of these guys? on these hexes of indeterminate size. Seems like you can. Yes. Okay. I think um, everything's arbitrary at this point. <laughs> you know, JP, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm actually making all of this up. You may not know this. <laughs> um, this is actually all made up, the whole game. What? Yeah. The mine, made up. Yeah. What, the, the mine is closed? There, There is no... <laughs> There is no real uh, Athos. It's all in our minds. No game called Dark Sun. Corey, what all do right. you do? Um, it's just the three of these guys in the room, and one of them is already grievously wounded. Yeah, and that's the one you're standing next to. All right, I'll just reckless attack him then. Okay. Wow. Just. <laughs> Jeez, Corey. Corey, you don't have to stand in for Matt today with the bad <laughs> dice rolling. Does a ten hit? It sadly Ooh. does not. He 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 wow. he sees he sees your recklessness coming, and he just like he's got this <laughs> he's got blood fountaining out of this gaping chest, uh, sucking chest wound, but he still manages to dodge your maul like nothing's happening. <laughs> Darren, uh, that's, that, that's just hurtful. It and is. I close to see if I can finish off the one who's gonna die. Um, yes. Does a 12 hit? 
No. No, a fucking 12 does not hit. <laughs> Jason. Okay, listen, what's the terrain like? Is it just a flat room? Or is there anything I can get on top is of it? Enough? Is it like you just Wait, have to I'm, ask a question every round? Like every round, required. no matter what, yeah. you have to. It's, it's, yes, it's there's a table. Flavor. There's a table with a dead rat on it. Hey, I'm going to jump on top of the table. And then okay. it's for flavor. It's for flavor. I'm going to jump on the table and I'm going to shoot downward at the um, the next guy. The unwounded guy? Yeah, unwounded. So that's, okay. um, that's a 20 to hit. 20 hits. Uh, that's one to eight plus three. That's 10 points. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, almost max, right? All right. Uh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Did I even get to go? Oh, I, yeah. I'm supposed to go after Darren and before you. I don't know why yeah, I yelled yeah. your name out. You're at the what bottom. A shame. I, what a shame. <laughs> All right. He... He jumps up on this table. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he runs over and takes cover behind this pile of bones. Um, these guys are, well, let's see. Actually, he jumps back here and takes cover also. Um Uh, he's going to swing at the mole because the mole is just bigger and a little bit scarier. A natural 20 on the die. Ooh. That seems pleasant. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. You aren't afraid of a little dust goblin's uh, bone sword, are you? Or lucky in dust goblin. Uh, seven and... Three is ten. You take ten points of of slashing damage. I'm I'm a little afraid. Okay. <laughs> um. And both of these are going to throw javelins at our uh, archer of doom. Mm -hmm. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Um. A 20 and a 20. Both javelins okay. hit you. Yes, sir. You take six. Six and seven is 13. And five is 18. You take 18 points of piercing damage. Wow. That's pretty big. Okay. All right. And then even though I move to cover, I'll let your attack with your with your bow uh retroactively proactively go off okay so, so you hit him and, and now jp's up so listen i hit him um i'm gonna use the rest of my movement to jump backwards off that table how far i can so i jumped okay. up i shot i jumped off okay yeah that was pretty far to get to that table but i'll let you like step off of it all right, all right. jp I'm going to I'm going to do uh exact same thing I did last time at the same one and um this time it'll be a 16 to hit for 8 of that uh frosting damage on his mental capacities. He's he's torn. He's really torn because he feels himself being killed, but also this is the first time he's sort of felt refrigeration in his life you know and he it's like it. right it's like, it's like oh my he's god like masochistic he's masochistic like, more like yeah i mean I, I don't know i realize it's killing me but also like i'm not sweating and you know <laughs> what um, this sensation he's like i, I feel this? the sudden i feel the sudden urge to go to go order a pumpkin spice latte and and knit a scarf i don't understand what's happening yeah. to me so he is uh, slowed by 10 feet again also so his legs are <laughs> by 10 to more feet frosty. okay well no no i don't think it that oh okay doesn't okay Corey. uh one more time so this one is badly hurt this one is well they're all badly hurt actually okay I'm uh, going to recklessly attack one more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
There we go. Dirty 20. All right. Four. Uh, nine points of bludgeoning damage. All right. He falls to the ground and his, his great big golem eyes close shut. Uh, Darren. Uh, I, I want to close with one of them with the rest of my move or the rest of my turn. Just take my movement to get into melee. Thank you. Okay. Darren. Natural 20. Natural 20. You can't Ooh. roll anything. You don't have any opponents near you. Oh, could I Must move? move. Right, thanks, Corey. Uh, can I move <laughs> over to uh, assist Corey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got a natural 20 on that? That's great. 2.5 feet away, so you can't hit. And I'm sorry, what's your rule? We do two dice and then... <laughs> you roll the damage twice. The no, you roll the damage twice and add them together, and then you and then you add your modifier. You don't double your modifier. You just double the dice. Gotcha. Uh, 15. Kills him. All right, then. Uh, okay. Uh. <laughs> Do we want to talk to this one? <laughs> yeah. Not really. He's like, wait, wait, wait. No kill, kill, kill. Uh, he can all use half his body. So. Say what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? yeah like, the left half of his body is like. He's got, a, he's got a little stocking cap on now and a little scarf, and he's trying to drink his pumpkin, pumpkin spice latte. No kill, kill, kill. Me talk, talk, talk. No kill, kill, kill. Do you guys... Do you guys spare the the third Morlock, or do you? I will speak uh, to him. Tele, I will speak to him telepathically. Um, okay. Is there any, what what information would you have that would make it worth our while to not finish you off? Kill kill you. <laughs> um. You come talk to Trex. Come talk to Trex, you must. Trex says, um, Trex smart. Trex speaks like human and knows a lot. Trex says, miners want their mind back. Trex wants something better in return. You come talk to Trex. I will share that with the party. And um, no, he's saying that out loud. To... He's saying oh, okay. that out loud. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. You come talk to Trex. Let me live. Have we established who the like brains are in our party? Like the one that's <laughs> going to make the rational decisions. Not after six. I don't, months I don't of think it's the no. naked half Catholic uh, <laughs> barbarian. It's definitely not the creature with fourteen arms. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm I mean, leader. I'm a leader. Well, at the very least, we could have them lead us back to their camp, right? Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, me mean, take you to Trex. Trex talk to you with big words. Yeah, I'll Trex say we talk take like him up on that. Yeah, uh, slowly. All right. So, with great care, the party is going to uh, is going to follow this unnamed um, dust goblin back to Trex to find out uh, more about uh, about this mine problem. Uh, join us in two weeks where we will be back with more of 11-Foot Pole. 